Hello people, I'm Bharat Acharya. Welcome to our new lecture. Today in C programming, we are seeing sorting of arrays. Yes, a super popular question. Take the last 10 question papers, you'll see it at least four times, maybe five, maybe six, depending on which university you are in. So this is something which anybody is supposed to know if you call yourself a programmer. This is also the kind of question that they will ask you while you are in your personal interview for your job placement. Give me the algorithm or better still write the program for sorting of an array and you should be able to do it there are so many methods of sorting take any method but your program should work now we're going to add various layers to the program the size of the list will be given by the user the elements won't be predefined by us will be taken from the user at runtime and we will have the option of either sorting in ascending order or in descending order. Why does this question come so often? Why does everybody ask this? It's used every day by all of us. We all do it all the time. Your uh, call list is sorted by the most recently called ones, right? You're when shopping, think of your favorite shopping app. You're on that app, let's say you selected jeans, you want to order some jeans. Now, when you say search for jeans, you see thousands of them listed. Now, what do you do then? Sort the lowest price first. Yeah, some people do the highest price first. I don't know why it's even created, but yeah, it still does it, and that's also sorting. The smart ones do sort on discount, the one which has the biggest discount. I'm not here to decide your shopping pattern. What I'm trying to tell you is next time you press those buttons, understand what's running in the background is sorting, and this is the program for it, and tell yourself that yes, I know how to do this. Everything we do in today's world is controlled by some instruction written by some programmer somewhere in the world. Tomorrow it's going to be your turn when you take a job and you become a software developer. You You'll be writing programs that will decide how thousands or probably millions of people will live their future life experiences. Anyway, now let's get on with it. Uh, like I said, because this question is asked so many times, I rate it as super, super important. When you're preparing for your C programming exam or whatever is the name of the subject, whether it's GATE, whether it's your college exam, see to it that you know how to do sorting of arrays. There are various sorting algorithms like the one listed over there. Uh huh. Good observation. They are sorted by their size or by their color. Yeah, since we are discussing sorting. Anyway, so there are various algorithms. The one most popular among students and even colleges is bubble sort. So that's the algorithm that we'll be using. First, I'll tell you what the algorithm is. It's very simple. Pay attention. Understand the algorithm. Compare two adjacent numbers. That's it. You want to sort 100 numbers. You're not looking at all 100 numbers. No, 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 no. Whether it's 100 numbers or 1000 numbers, you are only looking at two consecutive numbers. That is it. Understand how to manage these two numbers. Then it's a loop that will do your whole program. So compare two adjacent numbers like the first and the second or the second and the third, etc. If they are in the correct order, leave them. So if you're sorting ascending and your numbers are four and five, they're already in the correct order. There's nothing you need to do. Just leave them. If they are not, that is else, you know, with an if comes an else, else, exchange them. Now, right in the first, second lecture, we've seen how, how to exchange two values. How do you exchange? You want to exchange A and B, you take a temporary variable, temp. Temp is equal to A, A is equal to B, B is equal to temp. You move the value of A into temp, you move the value of B into A, and then you move the value of temp into B. And that's how they get exchanged. So this is what you want to do. It's a simple if and a simple exchange. Thereafter, put this in a loop, which will be in a bigger loop and your whole series will be sorted. Like I said, you're not looking at all those hundred numbers that you want to sort. You're only looking at two numbers. Say the algorithm once again. Now look at me. Don't look there. Compare two adjacent numbers. If they are in the correct order, leave them as it is. Otherwise, exchange them. Put this process in a loop. Let your whole loop complete. Your whole series will be automatically sorted. Now, to show you how this algorithm works, Let's say I have a series of five numbers. Uh huh. Observe, I've taken five, four, three, two, one. That means they are in descending order. That means for ascending order, this is the worst case input. You understand? Obviously, I'll show you the working of the algorithm with the worst possible input so that every facet of the algorithm, every point of the algorithm is clearly shown to you on the screen. Now, what did I say? Compare two adjacent numbers. So we'll start with comparing the first and the second number. Are they in the correct order? 5 and 4. You want ascending. Are they in the correct order? No. What do you do? You interchange them. So they become 4 and 5. You come, you're come. you done with the first and second. Now you move ahead. Very important point. Pay attention over here. After comparing first and second, what do you compare? Third and fourth or second and third? Exactly. Second and third, not third and fourth. This is the mistake many students make. You will also see people making this mistake in your class. 
they compare first, second, then they compare third, fourth, then they compare fifth, sixth. So what happens when you run your program, every two consecutive numbers are sorted, but the whole series is not sorted because you never compared second and third. They won't be sorted by magic. You need to compare them. So you move your pointer ahead by just one position. After you compare the first and second, you will compare the second with the third, then the third with the fourth. Are you clear? You just go one step ahead. Are you clear? So you will compare the second number and the third number, which is now five and three because they have been interchanged. So five and three, are they in the correct order? No, you want ascending. The smaller number should be higher. So they are not in the correct order. What are you going to do? Exchange them. They become three and five. Move just one step ahead. Now the algorithm will take over. If you understood it, just keep doing it and your job is done. Five and two, are they in the correct order? No, interchange them. They become two and five. Five and one not in the correct order, interchange them, they become one and five. Now, how many comparisons did you do? Tell me, you reached the end, how many comparisons did you do? There were five numbers. Did you do five comparisons? You compared first and second, second and third, third and fourth, fourth and fifth. That means you did four comparisons. If there were 10 numbers, you would do nine comparisons, which means you did N minus one comparisons. Are you clear? So this was a loop with a count of N minus one. With n minus 1 comparisons, what have you got? Have you got your final answer? No. You have got your first series. Listen carefully. You have got your first series. What has happened is, like a bubble, hmm, the highest number has bounced off all the numbers and has wiggled its way to the end of the series. This is inspired by the way bubbles work. And that is how this algorithm got the name bubble sort. Anyway, that's not a concern. It's just a matter of fact. Trivia. I knew it, so I'm just telling it to you. So, like a bubble, this has moved and taken its space. Now, what do you do? You do this whole operation all over again. So, this was a loop which will be inside a loop. So, this is a nested loop program. So, side by side, you're also learning how to work with a nested loop and it's no big deal. It's your inner loop, which, which kept doing these iterations, which we have to start all over again. So, the inner loop will be inside an outer loop. Now, it sounds big. It's very simple. Just look at the screen. Just look at the screen. We're going to start all over again. So, again, we start from the top. We compare 4 and 3. Are they in the correct order? No. Interchange them. They become 3 and 4. Now move ahead by one position only. You'll compare four and two. Are they in the correct order? No. Interchange. They become two and four. Move ahead by one position. Four and one. Wrong order. Interchange them. They become one and four. Move ahead by one position. Four and five. Yo. They are already in the correct order. No exchange required. What did I say? If they're in the correct order, just leave them. There's nothing you need to do. Just leave them. Good. Now what? What has happened? Have you got a final answer? No. Now the second last number has bounced off all the numbers and has come to the middle with the, to the second last position, the second highest number. So uh, I tell this thing to my students in microprocessors and other subjects that I teach. We have sorting in all of those subjects. Next time you're washing your hands, you have foam in your hand. Just look at it. Just It's a one second observation. Just look at it and instantly it should strike your mind. This is bubble sort. The bubbles always arrange them. It's a natural phenomenon. They arrange them by the order of their size. The biggest one will be in the middle, surrounded by the slightly smaller ones, slightly smaller ones. The tiniest ones will be at the corner of your hand. So what happened? They bounced off each other and automatically got sorted. So it's similar to what happened over here. The highest bubble came at the end, then came the second highest. Now, so you've got your second series, start the process all over again. So this is your outer loop, doing the entire process all over again. So you'll compare three and two. What happens? They're not in the correct order. Interchange, they become two and three. Now you compare three and one, not in the correct order. Interchange, they become one and three. Now three and four, correct order, because your third last number has come to the third last position. Four and five, correct order. Five already in the right place. Now you got your third series. Do it all over again. It's your outer loop. You're not doing the effort. You're just written the loop. The loop will do the effort. You just have to watch what's going on. Now compare one and two. Are they in the correct order? No, interchange them. They become now one and two. Now they're in the correct order. Move one step ahead. Two and three already sorted. Already sorted. Already sorted. And with this, your sorting is complete. Remember, I gave you the worst case, case input. If the worst case input got sorted by producing four such series, that means any inputs could be sorted by producing four such series. How did I get the number four again? Because totally there were five numbers. So even this count is n minus one. This is your outer loop count, which makes series after series after series. That is n minus one. 
and your inner loop count is also n minus 1. Inner loop is the one that does the comparisons, outer loop is the one that makes the series after series. Both counts will be n minus 1. Are you clear? In fact, there is a level of optimization. Now, here is an advice I always give to students, whether you're learning programming in higher level languages or whether you're learning assembly language, anything. I teach programming at various levels. Don't try to write the best possible program in the first attempt. Don't try to write the most optimized code, code in the first attempt. That's when you make programming tougher than what it is. It, programming is not tough. Students make it tough because they try to do too many things together. Your first goal should be to get a working program. Your program should work. It should give the correct result. Once you have reached that part, you have crossed the bridge. Now the whole idea is how to make the code better and better. And that's a never ending journey. Programs keep getting optimized. That's the reason why we get so many versions of the same app. Yes, they add new features, but they also keep optimizing the current code so that it works better and better and better. So that like, that, like I said, is a never ending cycle. And the more programming you do, the more it becomes your second nature and the optimized approach automatically becomes your natural approach. But it takes time to get there. In the beginning, if you try to write the best program possible, you will just make it tougher than what it actually is. Are you clear? So this is a working program. You will get 9 out of 10. Most university, most teachers will happily even give you 10 out of 10 if you do this and your program works and whatever inputs they give you, it gives you the right result. Now, when it comes to the optimization, if you are that perfectionist and you want to have the most optimized approach, of course you can have. In fact, if you're very smart, you would have already realized that by now. When we finished the first cycle, the highest number came over here. So in the second cycle, when the second highest number comes over here, we don't need to do this last comparison. Do you understand? The inner loop count, first time was four, next time only three comparisons were required. This comparison was not required. It's not that we can't do it. We do it. We won't exchange. It's all fine. You're not going to get a wrong result, but you're just doing one extra comparison, which is not needed. In fact, in the next iteration, 3 comes here. So 3 and 4 is also not to be compared. 4 and 5 also is not to be compared. So 2 comparisons are reduced. Next iteration, 2 and 3, 3 and 4, 4 and 5 already in the correct order. So all I'm trying to say is the inner loop count, if you keep decrementing it by 1 in every outer loop, you didn't understand what I said? Don't bother. This is the difference between 9 out of 10 and 10 out of 10. To get that one point, don't lose your nine points. First, get to the point where you can get nine out of ten. Then, once you reach there, this will automatically strike you. The change is just one line. You just have to write a minus one in that for loop title. And that's it. And that optimization will happen. I'll show you when I'm writing the code. So using that optimization, you can reduce the inner comparisons. In fact, there are more levels of optimization, which is not at a student level. But you can still do it if you want, like I said, your search for perfection. Uh, you can even find whether exchanges are happening or not. If I've already given you a sorted series, this algorithm will still keep exchanging all of them till the time or keep checking all of them till the time it realizes, okay, it's all fine. But if you do a smarter algorithm, you can find out whether you did any exchange at all in the whole cycle. If you didn't do it, it's already sorted. You don't need to do further comparison. So like I said, optimization is a never ending journey. It keeps getting programs, keep getting better and better and better. Your first goal is to get a working program. To get that 9 out of 10 is your first target. And that is what you will first do and then we'll see how to optimize it. So to give you a, the core of your program, this is how it's going to look like. For, there will be an outer loop. Outer loop is this one. The count will be n minus 1. Inside that, there will be an inner loop which does those inner comparisons. Its count will also be n minus 1. You will compare two adjacent numbers. Don't look at this and get scared. It just means array j and array j plus 1. That means the first number and the second number. As simple as that in simple language. So you'll compare first number and second number. Now look here, look here, look here, look here. If the first number is greater than the second number, that means they are in the wrong order. In ascending, first number should have been smaller. So if the first number is greater than the second number, you need to exchange them. So the first, that's what I've written, I've not written French, this is simple. If the first number is greater than the second number, exchange them. There is no else to this if. What did I say? What does the algorithm say? If the two number is the correct order, do nothing. So there is no else. If they are in the correct order, fine, just move ahead. If they are not in the correct order, that's when you exchange. So this means not in the correct order. If the first number is greater than the second number, exchange them. Are you clear? And I've already taught you how to do an exchange. Temp is equal to A is equal to B, B is equal to temp. That's how you do the exchange. So this is how the program approach will be. You want to write the whole program. This is how the entire program will look like. This is how your result screen will look like. In fact, if you want to see how the result screen looks like. Yeah. 
So first thing, this is an added thing that I'm going to show you when I'm doing the coding, how to get the series size from the user. So you're asking the user enter the number of elements. Let's say the user says six elements. It can be any number of elements. So six elements. So let's say my numbers are 12, uh, 3, 48, 97, 60 and 4. All right. Your given list was this 12, 3, 48, 97, 60 and 4. Sorted ascending. Observe, observe, observe. 3, 4, 12, 48, 60, 97. Absolutely correct. Sorted descending. What is there to sort descending? What do you have to do? Just change your condition. Instead of greater than, it just has to be less than. That's it. It's a, it's a minuscule change. And it's the same algorithm that will do the job. So, highest number should be first, 97, then 60, then 48, then 12, then 4, then 3. This is going to be sorting. As always, I'm going to do the whole program. Like I said, when I started this course, it's going to be hand-holding. I'm not going to just tell you the theory and this is the program and show you a picture of the program. No, 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 that's not programming. If somebody is teaching you programming by writing programs on the board, that person is just fooling himself, herself or you. <laughs> Programming is done by learned by doing it. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to write the whole program. You, the best thing that you should do is keep the keep this video on on your phone and on your computer side by side as I'm typing. You also type. Probably you'll end up writing even before me, or side by side you do it till the time you run it. You may get some errors. If you get errors, there is no problem. It's programming. You bound to get some errors here or there. No problem. Learn how to overcome them get your result and get that smile on your face. Now, this entire program and the whole course is there on my website, bharatacharyaeducation.com. The link is given down below. Click on the link, register yourself as a user. Uh, there are many courses that I teach. Over there, you'll see C programming course. Select the course. As soon as you make the payment, you start learning. The course is active for you for six months. In that, you can watch all the videos that I've already made plus all the videos that I'll keep making. I'm regularly making and uploading videos to get maximum content in the course. Uh, all the videos have programs and me doing the program and showing you every statement, not copy pasting it from somewhere, typing it out and showing you what happens and how to optimize the code, how to make it better, how to make the output look nice, readable and how to test for all the worst case scenarios that the teacher gives. Along with the uh, videos, you also get PDFs in the PDFs, all the programs that I've done are already there. So you can copy and paste it. If you don't want to go through the pain of typing it, you're absolutely sure that you learned it. You can copy and paste it and then make edits to it however you like it. All right. Most importantly, you get direct access to me. Down below is my number. Whenever you have a doubt, connect with me on WhatsApp. As soon as I'm free, I'll definitely reply. All right. Hope to see you there. Wish you all the best. Enjoy programming. See ya.